G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper report about a Yowie sighting at Arthur's Lake, Tasmania in 1915. So we'll get into it. This was published in the Mercury on Thursday, the 11th of March, 1915, titled Angling. Was it a baboon? Rodman writes, A well-equipped party consisting of Messrs. Eric Brock, Askin Morrison and Stanley Crisp have been spending a few weeks doing the lakes. At Great Lake, fine sport was experienced with the trout, as many as eight being secured in two days largest weighing six and a half pounds. The majority of the fish were obtained from safe harbour at Split Rock. The trout were in beautiful condition and showed great fight. The largest being landed only after excellent rod work was displayed by Mr. Brock. The fish at Arthur's Lake were found to be very scarce and in poor condition. Tumble Down River was sadly in need of rain and the fish were consequently very shy and in a pitiable state. The party had two cars and two portable motor marine engines which enabled them to visit and fish many untried corners and certainly added materially to the success of the outing. Mr. Crisp did not take part in the fishing, not having a license, but proved himself the gunman of the party by securing nine duck as well as numerous swan in one day at Arthur's Lagoon. It was certainly very quaint to see his, this keen sportsman attired only in blue suspenders with eyes to match, swimming backwards and forwards across the lagoon to secure his birds. On travelling through some dense scrub in the vicinity of the den, Mr Morrison encountered a peculiar animal, which closely resembled a baboon, but unfortunately it disappeared before a gun could be secured. Otherwise, it might have formed an interesting addition to the museum. It is all very well to joke about a baboon, but it is not improbable that such animals may be found in the back blocks of Tasmania. Curiously enough, both as regards fauna and flora, we have species identical with those of South America. The end. Uh, that's another interesting story of a Yowie sighting in Tasmania, because there's not many of them. Um, but I just want to know what's going on with these Tasmanian newspaper reporters. Because like this story is like, yeah, we had a great day fishing, we caught all these fish, this and that. Oh yeah, and we saw a Yowie. Like, shouldn't that be the main thing? And then I did another story in Tasmania called The Melton Mowbray Hounds at Oatlands, Yowie Sightings at Oatland, Tasmania in 1867. And it was the same thing virtually. Yeah, we had a fantastic time uh, pretending we were fox hunting, jumping f ho horses over uh, people's fences and that chasing kangaroos. Oh yeah, we also saw a Yowie as well. It's just really strange that uh, both these two stories, the fishing one and the horse riding one, they're more interested in the fishing and the horse riding than they are of sighting the Yowie, which should have been like the biggest thing about the articles. Anyway, that's it from me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.